How weird can we watch? <coughs> watch? Walk. Okay, I think I'm gonna run. Yes! Yes! Give me a mysterious phone call! Give it. Give it. Well, that's not creepy at all. In her short time as a detective, Jenny had learned never to ignore a ringing phone. Pick it up! Pick it up! Bad Ash, please have a wonderful night. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Do you really have to answer the phone that way, Jenny? Do you really? It's, excuse me. How would you like me to be your new dad, David? This is honestly feeling like where it's going. Hi, Wombat Master. It's good to see you. What's more mysterious, the phone call or the phone booth? A uh, little bit of both. The dog barks loudest before the dawn. What? Thank you, Christopher Plummer. CJ, is that you? The dog barks loudest before the dawn. Really? This again? It's me, Jenny. We don't need to do this. I have no idea who you are, and I know no one by that name. The dog barks loudest before the dawn. Captain Creepy! Fine. Huh? The early bird can't catch the lazy worm. Strongly from the east. People in glass houses should invest in curtains. <laughs> Excellent. Evening sky is full of fireflies. The last donut is the tastiest. I mean, ah, Jen, it is you. <laughs> of course, it is. I need to meet with you right away. Okay. Okay. Where do you want to meet? This place will do. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> when did Christopher Lloyd get into this game? Hello? Are you okay? Conspiracy theorists frequently jail for public Everyone outbursts. Everyone in town knew that CJ was mad, even dangerous. Questionable grasp of reality. Is that Doc Brown? <laughs> he's not dangerous. He's not he just dangerous. Doesn't accept things at face value. Thank you. Sure. I like him already. On extraterrestrials, but at least he's passionate about something. Listen, you get anal probed once, and you just can't let it go, man. CJ and Jenny certainly indulged each other's obsessions, but most of all, CJ treated Jenny like a colleague. Love that. And not a little kid. CJ, why did we go through all that if you're right here? Can't be too careful. Are you sure you weren't followed? Bitch, I was just walking by. You're in public. Who would be following me? Shh. This place is compromised. We don't have long to talk. Okay, but is this Peter Capaldi? Because... It, are we talking to the doctor? I'm just wondering. I'm, I'm hearing it. We're in a phone booth. It's a vibe. Now, what did you want to talk to me about? What? You called me. <laughs> did I? Why? Talking to CJ was a Aww. bit like navigating a maze. Oh. You had a rough idea of where you were headed, but you couldn't be sure you'd ever get there. I'll help you figure it out. The interrogation of CJ. Let's do this. All right, we only have three clues this time. Ooh, compass. Hidden in plain sight, strange symbols, cracked glass, wandering needle. Oh, he was hiding something. A compass with strange symbols where the cardinal direction should be. Looks broken. Is it? Where did you get that compass? No shit. This guy is three credits. This guy has three credits, including this one. <laughs> Sounds more like Christopher Lloyd, right? Jenny's voice by Eleanor Lawless. Is your kids, Jenny? Look who your kids. Ah, you spotted it. I knew you would. It belonged to my father. He left it to me to find the truth. Find the truth. You're not going to find anything with that. 
Jigawatts! That's all I'm hearing. That's all I'm hearing. Jigawatts! Um. A bit like you. Ah. It's searching. For what? For them. It's this town, Jenny. It's Arvid. They're here, among us. And this proves it. Or it could just be broken. I'm going with broken. I guess we'll never know. We can fix it. And then we can figure it out. Always look at the shoes. Always look at the shoes. Protection sucks, not a good fighting place. What's that sticking out of your sock? Grab it. Ah, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I intercepted a secret message. Classified intel. It's proof, Jenny. It's happening again. It's time for us to join the fight. No more anal probing, please. This doesn't look like the kind of pamphlet he usually makes. And they're coming for your pets. Are you prepared? Will you answer it's the call? It's being printed. Could CJ finally be on to something? Oh, Join the space the cadet box. today. Oh my god. A cereal box from another space-time continuum? It does really honestly sound like Christopher Lloyd. Some people are into it. Nope, just a regular cereal box. It's an ad for a toy. True. But why? Why would it just be lying there in the trash? Why are you digging in the trash, honey? Ooh, are, are one of these gonna be um a sticker? No. All right. I'm sorry, CJ. There are still great mysteries out there to solve, but this isn't one of them. Nope. Jenny had uncovered why CJ had contacted her, but something else had caught her eye. Let's say I'm not done yet. Something else in his hand. Birthday card. It's a birthday card. How old is CJ? And what does CJ stand for? Birthday card! Is it your birthday, CJ? Birthday? Whose birthday? Kaixen's birthday. But Kaixen died on his birthday. Assassination? Possibly. Abduction? Almost certainly. What? CJ, the card? Oh, this. It's for you. Impossible shot. Died instantly. Sorry about your dad. No suspects. No human suspects, anyway. Thanks, CJ. That's, uh, thoughtful. I didn't think you'd remember. I know what it's like to lose something important to you. Hi, Static! Now triple shred and incinerate that card as soon as possible! It's got my fingerprints all over it! So what's the plan now? Library. Research. Very important. Why is Very everybody going to the library? They let you back in? Not yet. Oh. But I've got this hat now. It wasn't your head that needed covering. No, for disguise! I know, CJ. What is it this time? More UFOs? Radio wave mind control. A globally connected communication network used exclusively to view pictures of cats. Hey, I'll take that. Jenny, you sound crazy. <laughs> I'm just preparing my defense for the hearing. Hearing? Is this because you tried to hypnotize Mrs. Brown's prize poodle? No. That was last week. Oh. It's because I peed in the water tower. <gasps> That's an offense. You can go to prison for that. CJ. And this is the thanks I get for saving everyone from the mind control chemicals. You can go to prison for that. From the mind control chemicals. Well, I guess I'll see you later then. Bye, CJ. CJ was gone. CJ, I know you're standing behind the phone booth. I just watched you walk over there. Hi, CJ. No, I'm not. Oh, yeah, that's okay, not then. that's Bye. not legal. That's that's bad. See you later. Bye, CJ. Bye, Christopher Lloyd. See you later. 
Avocado Hall. Wait, are all these names something funny? Hold on. Well, we will miss you. I mean, the amount of dead animals and insects, who would notice? Yeah, but that's like waste. Hey! We got laws against Santa, or uh, with that, with sanitation. Ah. What are you doing, Jenny? Damn. That's the third time today. Maybe you should stop doing it then. Oops. Hi, Jenny. Great job solving that case today. Hey. It's really cute the way that you and your mom work together. I wish I was that close with my parent. Enough chit chat. Got anything new for me? <gasps> oh, yes. This is the real deal. Hot off the press. Hot off the press. It is. It is. Very, it's Nancy Drew, but it, it's a little adult. Um, and there's lots of sass, and the game mechanics in it so far are pretty damn adorable. I haven't had a chance to distribute these yet, so keep them to yourself. Ada and Jenny belong to one of the oldest societies in Arthurton. An eclectic band of treasure hunters, collectors, creators, and dealers. Together, Stickers? they were known as... Stickers? Sticker Club! How did I know? How the fuck did I know? For generations, Gumbold students had been hiding and finding stickers all over town. Officially, Jenny was too young to join, but she'd found so many stickers on her own that they made me. her an honorary <laughs> member. Nice. It's kind of adorable. Let's see. Nice crisp edges, rich colors, very tacky. Thanks. I spent all week making these. If only you spend as much time in your schoolwork, you might not be failing my mom's class. Whoop! Uh, Jenny thought to herself. I hope so. It's to celebrate the Dean's retirement. I'm super sad that he's leaving, but... <laughs> Called out. Listen, we already had a call out for me, so it's only fair that she gets one too. Okay? Okay. It is kind of like a mix between Nancy Drew and Phoenix, right? It's a perfect reason to make new stickers. Exactly. Oh. We're going on an epic sticker hunt before the Dean's party. You should join us. Even if Jenny had wanted to join them. And I don't. She knew she'd be stuck with her cousin all weekend. Thanks, but I work alone. <gasps> oh, okay. See you around, Jenny. Bye. I just want to make sure there's nothing. Nothing. All right. This game is so pretty. I don't think we have anything Lake else nowhere. to do. One mile. Leave. We got nothing else. Let's go, baby. Stop. Perfect. Hold it right there. That ain't gonna make it. Okay. Let her go. That's not how any of that works. And we just had our paper our papers oh, on decapitation. Hi, Slibbard. That was ominous. Hmm, <laughs> think of Rompo, yeah. That was your fault. <laughs> Sir! Detective for hire. Jenny had saved up the whole summer to place an ad in the local paper, but no one had answered it. Until now. What could this new case be? Her imagination ran wild, picturing the You're finding the damn cat. And so, after helping her mom at Gumbolt College, she hurried to the pier at Lake Nowhere to rendezvous with her new client and crack another thrilling case. In the middle of nowhere. Courage, the cowardly dog. Here we go. It's so pretty. As Jenny neared the edge of the woods. She heard a sudden strange sound. What the? Fuck. Hey kid. Watch where you're going. Watch 
where you're dropping wrenches. Hey, screw you! Your wrench nearly cracked my head open. Thank you. Oh no! It's not damaged, is it? I'm gonna punch somebody. That's my lucky wrench. Oh, is it your lucky wrench? How about I send it right back up to you? Yeah, lucky it didn't kill me. <laughs> When's this upgrade gonna be finished anyway? Look, kid, I just go where they tell me. Every night, another power surge. Oh. Every morning, another part of the grid fry. Oi. And I'm out here fixing it. <clears throat> Do I get any thanks? No. Because you're dropping wrenches on people's fucking heads. What's causing all the outages? At the moment, a little red-headed girl. Now throw me my wrench, kid. Get it your fucking self. Climb down, bitch. Looks like I have all the leverage. Ooh, yeah. So tell me, what exactly is taking so long with these repairs? Apart from shoddy workmanship, that is. Oh! Oh! Hey, we're girl. busting our butts to keep your lights on. And I'm here busting your balls while you can't fucking fight me! These lines should be lasting for decades, but they're burning out after just a few weeks. Hmm. It's the strangest thing. Is it? Anyway, toss me my wrench. Fuck off, I want to ask but you more be questions. Careful. It's a family heirloom. I'm asking another question. Go fuck yourself. But what could possibly be using that much power? You're killing me, little girl. Fuck off, you almost killed me. Arthurton's a tiny town. The mines are practically shut down. So what could it be? Surely someone must know. All I know is I got three more jobs today. And I can't finish any of them without my wrench. Climb down and get your fucking self. So, will you please just give it back already? Fine. I've got bigger fish to fry. Thanks, Itch. kid. Guy's a piece of work. What are we looking for? What are we looking for? What are we looking for? It usually gives us a little glimmer glimmer if we're doing okay, right? Yabba's middle finger. Hi, Casually Crude. It's good to see you. I mean, kind of on brand. But also, the guy was giving me fucking lip. Fuck him. As Jenny stepped out of the dark forest, she saw warm sunlight reflecting off the cool lake. It's a really pretty game. I love this art and style. Next to that, something even cooler. <laughs> Keith Strousbury. <laughs> Come on, Keith. Dance like you beat it. Bean it. <laughs> Not so much grinding. <laughs> oh, Keith, what are you doing? Not everyone saw it, but to Jenny, there was something special about Keith. He's just happy being himself. Nothing seemed to bother him. Not even having to dance in a costume for a dollar an hour. Oof. But Jenny dollar an hour? So laid back. Not when it comes to standing up for a friend. Hell no. We smacking these bitches. <gasps> I said I wanted to punch somebody, so let's do this. Let's go. Let's go. I want to punch a hoe. Let's go. Let's go. I want to punch a hoe. Let's go. Come on. I think there's been enough dancing for one day, don't you? Been enough. She still does a fucking... Hey, Jenny. Pun. Hello. Susan. Susan. Actually, I prefer Susie. Susie! Busy laughing while others earn a living, Susan? Not everyone's got your dad's money, I guess. Ooh! Jenny! Hi! 
Thunderdean, Strasberry, Benchformer, Gumball, Runebeam. With intense, mysterious eyes. Best friend ever. Cool should have been his middle name. <laughs> Instead of Tarquin. Tarquin. But Keith was so cool, he didn't even mind. Give me one minute. I'm just finishing my... Sure. Don't let me interrupt your work. My shift ends. In 15 minutes. I know. I'm early. I'm, I'm early. a client over at the dock. Paid case. Could be big. Real big. Real big. Couldn't be as big as her head. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's really... Impressive? Maybe. Let him talk! All I care about is keeping this town crime-free. The only crime here is that haircut. <gasps> <laughs> Both have the same haircut. Back in a minute, Keith. I'll have the usual. Straight up and hot. Nothing fancy. You got it. Also, Susie seems nice. Her friends seem mean. So... What's that about? Thank you also for that quote. What are we doing? Oh, it's the college radio. How about now? Move it to the left a bit. What's he doing out there? Not now, kid. We're busy. Any better? No, keep going. Keep going. No. We're gonna fall. Yes, it's working. Hold it right there. That's what all the fuss is about. Not this guy again. What is that? Whatever it is, it's not my music. Maybe it's jazz. <laughs> Shh. I'm trying to listen. Oh, shush. I'm you should. Just, I'm in charge. When's this party getting started, boys? Oh, uh, just a few more minutes. Uh, how are we supposed to dance to this? I think we're losing them. Another station must be interfering with the signal. But there aren't any other stations in Arthurton. Wait, all these wires must be acting as a giant antenna. Jenny listened closely to the mysterious transmission. What is it? It was like no other radio broadcast she'd heard before. Sounds like Alien. Alien Invaders, the game. Hold it steady! Sorry, I'm trying. That's like how you have to the leg up. You might as well come down. No, wait. I can almost make out what they're saying. But just like that, the sound faded away. Boo. What did you do? It has no use. Come on. We gotta get this equipment back to the AV department by six. Jenny was so lost in contemplation, she'd almost forgotten the case at hand. She's gotta go visit her client. client. She's supposed to meet her at the dock. Let's go. What's this? No Danger. swimming. No swimming. Sounds safe. Hmm. How do I get this ladder down? Mm, still stuck. That didn't work. I guess we're not supposed to open it. Unless we shake it again. Oh, hey! Talk to Dana. Let's see. Uh -huh. Yeah, no shit, I dragon. Oh, shucks. It's Just a boot. another boot. Don't put it back! Hey, Throw it easy, out! Mr. Humdrum. I'm gonna smack these people. Oh my! If it isn't little Jenny LeClue. You're catching the same boot because you keep putting it back in the fucking lake. What a glorious day, don't you think? As far as Jenny was concerned, small talk was like a second pair of underpants. <laughs> Uncomfortable and completely unnecessary. <laughs> but Mom always says, create a good rapport and they'll reveal everything to you. That's true. So she gave it a shot. Let's do it. Talk about fishing. How's the fishing? Oh, 
Oh, the fishing's great. Yeah. But the catching is bad. Oh. Oh, I'm getting her old boots and strange bits of metal. But just look out there, Jenny. She's got that wonderful afternoon glow. Mm-hmm. No one knew why the lake glowed at night. And few were brave enough to swim its murky waters. I don't want to swim in there. What lay beneath its depths was the stuff of myth and legend. Somewhere out there lies the giant red herring, or so they say. No. But no one's ever caught one. Sounds fishy to me. Because it's a... Because it's a red... It's a red hair... Okay. Well, Fine. She's Fine. Out there. I'll catch her. Someday. Great. Well, now that we have a good rapport, where can I find Mrs. Humdrum? <laughs> well, she's down there on the ridge. Ah, so Only we had to go problem. talk to him first. I think the ladder is broken. Ah, yes. There's a knack to it. First you shake it. First you shake it. Then you kick it. Then you kick it. And then you push it. And then you push it. Sounds unnecessarily complicated. Yeah. Well, I'll join you down there in a bit. Just have to sort my tackle out. Tackle, tackle. So you can catch the same goddamn boot over and over again because you refuse to take it out of the lake? All right. So we're gonna shake it. Kick it. And push it! Here we go. Aha! That did the trick. Rendezvous with Gail. Mrs. Humdrum, I presume? Oh, hello! Oh my god, she's you? delightful already. I'm the private detective you contacted. Jenny LeClue, at your service. I'm here to solve your case. Who is it, Dan? It's Jenny, dear, the LeClue girl. <laughs> she doesn't see so well without her glasses. Huh? Oh, hello, Jenny. I'm afraid I don't see so well without my glasses. Do you not hear well either? Nothing wrong with her hearing, though. <laughs> what did she say? <gasps> I said there's nothing wrong with your hearing, dear. Okay. Oh, no, thank you. I've already eaten. Oh, Jesus. All right. I believe you have a case for me? We do. We, we do. I'm finding your glasses? Great. So what's the trouble? Haunted by the ghost of a former lover? Oh, Lord. Worried you're being poisoned by a mad uncle? Oh, God. Something so dark and gruesome I can't even begin to imagine the horror? Sounds great. Well, I've lost my reading glasses. I am, hi, MP. It's good to see you. Oh. oh. And there it was. A real case. A confounding mystery to challenge Jenny's brilliant mind. Let's do this. <sighs> I thought this was finally going to be a good one. What do you think, Jenny? Can you help? Of course I'm gonna help. Sure, Mr. Humdrum. I'm gonna need to ask you a few questions. <laughs> the missing glass. Time to investigate. Missing or stolen? Recent? Jenny recognized the distinctive indentations left behind by a pair of spectacles. Indeed. She must have been wearing them recently. You still have marks Are they going to be stuck in her hair? Please notes. tell me they're going to be stuck in her hair. You probably lost them within the last day or two. Oh, I never would have thought of that. When do you last remember wearing them? I'm really not sure. Dan? You had them at your Tuesday book club. Oh, yes. We're reading Fifty Shady Graves. I've never been interrogated before. This is such fun. She's delightful, though. Flea biscuit? I'm sorry. She went to the dog track and she put a bet on a goddamn dog named Sea Biscuit. I'm sorry. 
Flea biscuit. Okay. Risk taker. Bad odds. Yeah, Any twelve to one. The hole in the fence at Grubman's to watch the races. She could understand why the dogs ran so hard. They were chasing the promise of food. What the adults were chasing was less relatable. Yeah. I noticed you're a gambler. Twelve to one. You've been at the Greyhound races. Twelve to one. Fine. That was yesterday. We always go to Grubman's on Wednesday. Interesting. You really are very good. The best. How long have you been solving mysteries? But I'll ask the questions, thank you. <laughs> All right, we got six more. I want that sticker. I want the sticker. No, I want the sticker. Oh, I can just get it. Oh, shoot. Uh -huh. This game is just one huge pun attack. It really is. Snagged on That's something. That's a large hole. She must have caught it on something. Ooh. Did you have trouble climbing down the ladder, Mrs. Humdrum? Why, yes, I did. How on earth did you know? There's a tear in your pants pocket. <gasps> well, what do you know? I didn't realize these pants even had pockets. What's next? Fingerprints? Oh, polygraph test? It's like you're reading my mind. Don't need a polygraph test. Also, they're wildly inaccurate. Shoot, are you a bird watcher? Do you often carry a pair of binoculars? She doesn't go anywhere without them. I presume you don't wear your glasses when you use the binoculars. Because then you have reading glasses. No, I can't get my eyes close enough to the eye cups. Hmm, I see. Did you take your binoculars with you to the races? Of course. Those critters are so tiny, I can't keep up without my binoculars. Interesting. Have you figured it out yet? The suspense is killing me. I'm working on it, lady. Got two more. Nice use of colors. Strong smell of turpentine. I know that. I expect you're finding it difficult to paint without your glasses. Oh no, I never wear them when I paint. I like to feel the canvas. To interpret the colors. Huh. She's an incredible painter. Wonder if they sell the stickers. That would be fucking dope, Jonana. Thanks, but I don't mix business with pleasure. I feel like you know more about me than I do. One more. Fluffy ascot hair. Looks freshly blow dried. A professional job. Is your, your hair, hair looks lovely today, Mrs. Humdrum? Is that a new style? Thank you. I had it done yesterday. Dan didn't notice. They call it the Queen's Quaff. Well, it's certainly big. It's certainly quaffy. And expensive. You would notice. But I'm worth it, Dan. Who could put a price on that beautiful head of hair? You're not so bad yourself, hot stuff. Gross. Child. You are so thorough. Any more questions? I think I have everything I need to wrap this one up. It's in your hair. Where are Gail's glasses? It's in her fucking hair. So she doesn't wear her glasses when she's painting. Her hair is very fluffy. And she always has her binoculars near her. I think those are the three clues. How do we feel about this? How do we feel about this? The hole in the pocket doesn't matter. It could fall out. Uh, the bedding slip doesn't really matter. It just shows that she didn't have them for that because she didn't need it. Seems accurate. Haircut. Painting. Binoculars. But she called them binos. Let's do it. Oh. No, that's not it. 
I'm missing something. We are missing something, apparently. Can I do this? Oh, I have to redo A, I see. Maybe since, I don't know, maybe we'll do that. Nope. Black off. Wait, I have to do it? But I know I don't. Okay. Hmm. There's a big hole in her pocket, but Gail didn't even know her pants had pockets. Hmm. So she so wouldn't have used it. She would keep her glasses in them. Okay. Sure. I guess we'll do this one. Oh my god. Not just for bird watching. Gail was at the races last night. She had to remove her glasses to use the binoculars. Uh-huh. Gail also had her hair cut recently. Uh-huh. It's fluffy and big and could easily hide a small object. Uh-huh. I knew where it was. We just needed to get there. And thank you, Eye Dragon. You Solving are correct. Solving a complex mystery like the case of the missing glasses was tough work. Let's do it. But now came the most satisfying part. Solving it. Delivering the dramatic denouement. Denouement. Thank you for using that word. Let's review the facts. One. Not only do you love your binoculars, you've come to depend on them for bird watching, greyhound watching. Basically, anything far away watching. That's true. You need bifocals, honey. I immediately sense the two optical devices, your binoculars and glasses, were incompatible. Thus, to use one, you had to remove the other. Fascinating. Fact two. Yesterday, you changed your hairstyle. I did. Though fun, it was also impractical. So tall that it could easily conceal a small object. I see where this is going. Please, don't interrupt. After much research, deliberation, and debate, I, I mean, concluded with there is only one place the missing glasses could be. They'd be on your head the whole time. Oh, so they are. Right there on top of my head. Ba-boom. Incredible. What a talent. They're always in the last place you look, aren't they? A master detective in the making. What would we have done without you? Only gone to <laughs> Greyhound races? Gail, don't forget to pay the girl. Oh, of course, silly me. You must be rewarded generously for all your hard work. It's gonna give me five bucks. A nickel? Now don't spend it all in one place. Thanks. I'll do my best. What is this slave labor that they make me do? Never escape capitalism, can I? Where do you want me to go? Okay, well, it's not there, so let's go back down. Come on. Another postcard? Now we did it. Face palms. This is even worse than Dangarumpa, right? A nickel. What is this? Euro trip? I agree, Big Daddy Over. Strike, 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 strike. Totally safe and pollution free. Not even remotely. Are you ready, Keith? Wow, what an amazing detective. Glasses on her head. Hmm, who could have guessed? Oh, you heard. Whatever would we do without Master Investigator Jenny LeClue? I thought it was pretty cool, Jenny. Thanks, Keith. Have a good night, Sprinkles. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. I hope you have a good night. And a whole nickel. You must ah! be so excited. Yeah, that's more than her mom makes in a month. <laughs> <laughs> 
Come on, guys. Let's all just... I'm about to hit somebody. Hey, Jenny. My grandma called. She wants her sweater back. <gasps> but it's from my grandma. That's rude. <laughs> oh, how wonderful it was to joke around with friends. That's, I've had enough of this. That's not joking. That, that's, that's rude. Whoa. These bitches flipping bullies. I agree. They do, Eye Dragon. They do. They do. Am I about to read this bitch? Creep. New. Always wearing. Brushed over face. I don't want to be really mean because we're going to save that. Over application of makeup. Hair drawn over face. Wear sunglasses even at night. You're trying to distract from something. A lazy eye, perhaps? What? No! How do you... Shut up, Jenny! You don't know anything! Oh, I don't? Wow, Jenny. That was cruel. Was it? Who even says something like that? You just said my mom makes a nickel a month. Suck it! Aw, don't cry, Veronica. Yeah, I like to be. She's just a weirdo nobody! Jenny, let who? <gasps> and, and the case of the missing friends! <laughs> uh, yeah. Good one, Veronica. Come on, let's get you home. Yeah, bye. Aren't you guys in college? Are you coming, Susie? Thanks for the coffee, Keith. And the extra sugar. Of course. It's... Extra sugar? Excuse? Excuse? Also, that is true. Don't dish if you can't take it. Nothing special at all, and the same thing he does for everyone. Oh, okay. See you around, Keith. Jenny, you gotta. Okay, honey, you you gotta stick up your ass. You gotta calm it down just a little bit. Well, that went well. Shall we? Uh, yeah. I've got no customers now, anyway. Nothing exciting ever happens here. Careful I'm what so you wish tired for. Of these simple cases. Careful what you wish for. <clears throat> How am I supposed to become a real detective if there are no real crimes to solve? I don't know. Aspire? Dream? Write about it? You up that old lady. <clears throat> don't worry. Thanks, Keith. But it was stupid, and everyone knew it. That's stupid if they need your help. Including your girlfriend. Oops. And she's not my... Uh. And you really mustn't let them treat you like that. You should stick up for yourself. Uh-huh. They don't mean anything. Sometimes you just gotta speak up and say how you feel. Well, I... You can't just let people walk all over you, Keith. Jenny, stop interrupting him. And Keith, you better just... 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 Just tell her to shut up. Okay. It doesn't matter anyway. Nothing's gonna change. Not in this ghost town. It's not so bad. Don't you ever wonder what it would be like to live somewhere else? No. Oh, um, not really. Who am I kidding? There is nowhere else. Not for miles. She skipped it. Oh, shucks. I see practice is going well. Mm -hmm. Is your dad still pressuring you to play? Well... Come on, Keith. You hate basketball. And tough love. But you're the worst player on the team. I'm not the worst. Well, on the bench, anyway. Why don't you just tell him you don't want to play anymore? It's... Strawberry tradition. 
That's my point, Keith. This whole town is dead, stuck in the past. Everyone is just doing what they're told without questioning why. Where's the ambition, the sense of adventure? There is such a thing as being too ambitious. Are we still talking about basketball? Yeah, no shit. <clears throat> How's your mom? <clears throat> she seems distracted. distracted. That's the word for it. Normally, she's so focused on her job. I mean, it's understandable. It's been almost a year since. Hmm. And now she's planning to go away for the weekend. And she still won't tell me why. Yeah. Uh huh. She was definitely acting weird earlier. Mm hmm. Maybe she's lonely? Mm hmm. You know what? You're right. I am? She shouldn't be alone right now. Actually, your dad told me they were meeting in the library. We're going to need supplies. Two of Mr. Beam's finest, please. To go, of course. Here is my payment in full. That's a nickel. A nickel. Put the rest on my tab? Ah. Thanks for the pep talk, Keith. You always know what to say to make me feel better. Last stone. You want it? You take it. You need to practice. I didn't want to say and that. Nothing. Hit it. Yeah! Three pointer. Nice one, Keith. Maybe your luck's finally changing. Do some shenanigans. Do some shenanigans. Do some shenanigans. Do some shenanigans. That be some shenanigans. Oh boy. Oh boy. Keith was an excellent listener. I make that fun. Maybe he just didn't speak much. That's the BFF signature way, move. Jenny really enjoyed their little talks. He was the only person who really seemed to understand her. No. Jenny biked briskly towards the library back on campus to surprise her mother. Nothing exciting ever happens here, she grumbled, unaware of the great adventure that lay in store just around the corner. Keith doesn't understand you if you constantly interrupt him and interject your own opinion, which means you're only fucking listening to yourself. <sighs> okay, sorry. <clears throat> you heard? Thank you. <laughs> Tried and true, Nancy Drew. All right, let's do some shenanigans. The library is quiet. Too quiet. Well, we know they're not getting their hanky-panky on. Gerald Strasbury. Cornelius Strasbury. It's a wall of Strasburys. It's a wall of Strasburys. No worries, comp. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. It was really great to meet you. Thanks for talking wrestling with us and hanging out. I hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time if you're around. And I hope that you get some good rest. The Strasbury lineage stretched back to the very founding of the university. How old is this university? There had been a Dean Strasbury at Gumboldt for over 150 years. It's a long time. It won't be for much longer. The Dean's retiring, and the only Strasbury left is Keith. And he's not exactly the academic type. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Why is that painting like that? Hmm. No one on duty. No one on duty. Yeah. paradise. Duty. There's a note on the desk. Memo, this man is not allowed in the library due to past incidences. Uh, incidents. Uh, he may be wearing a hat and or fake mustache. Be vigilant. Thanks for the sticker. Uh, someone keeps leaving book carts in the quiet study area. Please remember to return carts to the front desk and stop standing on them. We've got ladders for a reason. Yeah, why would you do that? That's dumb. Why would you do that?
That was weird. Yeah. Hello? Excuse? Mom? Excuse? Mr. Strasbury? Excuse? Anybody? This town really likes people with the common sense. Mm hmm. Jenny's words echoed through the library. I love the narrator, Something's by the way. Something's not right here. I'm sorry, Arthur Finkelton. A mystery was unfolding. Whatever it is, I'll get to the bottom of it. Asa, the quiet librarian. Too quiet. I love the music. I want to touch that painting. Yes, what is this? I saw that immediately and I thought it was weird. What is it? Tell me. Les Strousbury, Gumbold's 21st and jolliest dean, smiled down at Jenny. And a crooked painting with some weird shit behind it. Looking a bit wonky today, Mr. Strousbury. Mm-hmm. A pair of wires ran down the wall and disappeared behind the painting. Super weird. It's too high to reach. What are you hiding back there? Okay, can I make sure that I get a ladder and I don't get a the cart? The chandeliers that adorn this library are made from rare Arthurtonian quartz. Which means I should make sure that they fall. Kindly Got it. donated by the Glatz Foundation. Glatz! The Glatz family was one of the oldest in town. They were the first to mine the valuable quartz deposits Let me guess. beneath Arthurton. Is that Susie's family? And as such, they became incomparably wealthy. And they sure like to let everyone know it. Let me guess. That's Susie Glatz. Let me guess. Or because I'm a bitch, it's Susan. Laddertron 5000. The pinnacle of remote ladder and bookcase technology. Kindly donated by the Glatz Foundation. Of course it was. Oh. Yeah. Dangerous. Yeah. The newly installed ladder system was prone to malfunction. Well, then you should stop doing that. These damn rich people. Should have kept the old wooden ladders. They never tried to electrocute me. I need to find a way to turn the power off. Well, I shouldn't step over that. So. Oh, the control panel. Perfect. Jenny gazed at the technological marvel of Laddertron 5000. Laddertron. Seems pointless. It's not hard to move a ladder. Sometimes it feels like some unknown force is just trying to slow me down. Ah! Like a game? Ooh. No good. I don't think I'll be able to move the ladders while the electricity is on. Oh. good at puzzles i'm just telling you that i have a sixth sense for them cards. okay it's the only way to reach the highest shelves no this is dumb i need ladders in fact this could be useful but something else had caught her eye this table's a complete mess who would leave it like this Yeah, but smart. Thank you, French Llama. How you doing tonight? Conspiracy theories, messy diagrams, genealogy books, old town documents. I'm gonna go with CJ. Illegible scribbles. I'm gonna go with CJ. Diagrams of giant machines. A worn copy of Aliens in Arthurton. Hmm. Jenny knew only one person could have been sitting here. Definitely CJ. CJ. It's odd though. He usually hides everything when he's finished. It is weird. What's this? 
A tattered Ooh. piece of paper with a series Sticker. of seemingly unrelated notes. Sticker. Sticker! Okay, possible landing site. That seems to be a clue. Abandoned mines. The Shadowmen. What are the Shadowmen? Forest. UFO from circling. Intense sound. Experimenting on corpses, powerful beams of light, taken graveyard. That doesn't sound great. UFOs. Shadowmen. Experiments on corpses. Ugh. It seemed that CJ was unraveling a mystery of his own. Wait, there's something on the other side. <gasps> Ugh, it's a map. A color map of Arthurton. We got a map. We got a map. We got a map. Now we can fast travel. Okay. Jenny had never seen a town map with this level of detail before. Why is what's the what's the skull? What do you guys see the skull and that's in the middle? You see the skulls in like the middle of the lake. This is just like chilling there, just being all creepy and shit. Do I'm sorry. Do 3D glasses work on this or filtering glasses? Because those colors look oddly suspicious. I can't believe CJ left this behind. That's so unlike him. Because maybe something happened. I'd be terrified if anyone else found it. I'll keep it safe until I see him again. Love it. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that skull. Look at it. It's creepy. Hello? Is it an alien? Boom. I don't want to decorate that. That seems like a terrible idea. Why are we doing these terrible shenanigans? This is such a bad idea. I know this is a bad idea. But you're gonna make me do it anyway. Um. Got it. No secrets between friends, Mr. Strasbury. Jenny stood on her tiptoes and delicately removed the priceless painting from the wall. Nope, it's gonna fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops. Yeah, saw that coming. Aha! Precisely what I was hoping to find. But turn off the power! It was? Let's see. Lights, bookcases, ladders. Ladders! Turn it off! I'll cut the power and continue my investigation. Let's do it. But Jenny knew better than to play with electricity, so she left it alone. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. It's a simple switch. Perfectly safe. I had to go with my gut. Science unnerved our tiny hero. I had to go with my gut. But even worse was the dark. Jenny had always been terrified of the dark. How do I not have a flashlight? Are you kidding me? I am a detective. Just breathe. A great detective never succumbs to fear. Like that did the trick. Why would I ever do anything else? Hi, KB Tibbs. It's good to see you. Wee 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 wee. Make sure that stays there, shall we? Stopped in her tracks. The sign clearly read, "Wet." Her path was blocked. You're kidding me, right? Ha! Trampling muddy feet over a perfectly clean floor. She was a maverick, not a monster. Fine. Don't make no fucking sense. But fine. Where the hell am I going? Let me up. Nope. How do I find? 
things. Yeah. All right. Okay. Got it. I see now. We got this. We will play with the with, with the electricity. I don't want to go in that door yet. This is what I want. The fallen remains of a bookcase blocked Jenny's path. Of course it did. It looks like a bomb went off in here. It's too precarious to climb over. Can I hop down? Nope. Damn. All right, fine. I'll go through the damn door. I didn't want to yet, but I'll go through the damn door. Yes. There it is. There's something on that shelf, but yeah, I can't reach it. What do you mean we can't reach it? What do you mean we can't reach it? What the hibbity ham jibbity jam? What you talking about? Uh. I can't move it. Man. Jenny is a short motherfucker. True people climb, it's a requirement. Listen. Boo. I guess we'll see if we get anything, I guess. We can't move this this way, can we? No, I look at stopped by this. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Rare right. books. Our most precious collections reside in this temperature controlled room. Kindly donated by the Glatz Foundation. Yeah, yeah, we know. Okay, but also. How do I get it? Do you think it's gonna come back? Use tongs to reach for things in the highest shelf. I'm not terribly tall, but I can say that I have not had to use that before. What could I use to reach it? Maybe I don't have anything yet. It's right. locked. Oh. No problem. I'll just pick it. Jenny was skilled with a lockpick, having watched her mother demonstrate the process countless times. Let's but do it. It's just for fun at home. This was the real world. No, we're we're gonna. You do couldn't it. just go around picking other people's locks. That was a crime. A great detective knows when to bend the rules, and the paperclip she has in her pocket. We are absolutely doing that. Oh no, there's lock picking in the game. Mom always says lock picking is a subtle art. Move slowly and search for the sweet spot. I'm terrible at luck at any of this. Since when? Oh my god. Full hammer that scared the crap out of me. Thank you so much for the 69 biddies. It must have been a rush of blood that caused Jenny to act so irrationally. Regardless, she had picked the lock and felt strangely exhilarated. What treasures. I love the, the fucking conniption fit this author is having. Oh, it's empty. Still, lead book car could be useful. Yeah. To, like, get our shit, man. Why we're doing this. No. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. 
Ja, ja. Did a bomb actually go off? Because holy crap. Something's blocking the ladder. The art in this game is pretty fantastic. Full hammer, how's your week going? There's something stuck in the track. Let's grab it. <gasps> Ipsa, Scientia, Potestas, Est. That's the ring. It's the gaudy ass ring. ring. No wonder the ladders were malfunctioning. The ring must have caused a short circuit. How? I'll keep hold of this and return it to the Dean when I see him next. Yeah, and also accuse him of blowing up the fucking Whoa. library. An empty library, a fallen bookcase, and now a broken balcony? This mystery has all the hallmarks of foul play. Yeah, it does. Ooh, somebody grabbed the somebody grabbed the curtains. Strong impact. They say words can't hurt you. In this case, I'd be inclined to disagree. Hey. Solid iron and oak, torn apart like a piece of bread. It would have taken some serious force to do this. Mm-hmm. Broken half. Something bad happened here. We should go down. This is feeling more and more like a crime scene. Which is why we shouldn't be investigating it the way that we are, because now we are all over it. And then Jenny saw it. Sorry, sorry about a concussion, right? Covered in a ripped curtain and surrounded by broken glass. It is a crime scene. Don't be too excited about a dead body, honey. People are gonna think you're weird. Come on. No. Let's just make sure there's no other secret. Almost like I've played video games before. People would think you're weird for being excited about a dead body. Hmm. Not, it's not great. This is not ideal. You never forget the first time you see a dead body. It harrows the mind, terrifies the soul, scars you to your very core. It's not going to be a body. A dead body? No way. This is amazing. Who lay under that curtain? Who had breathed their last breath? Who had shuffled off this mortal coil to meet? It could be anyone. I mean, it could be an escaped lunatic from the asylum. Could it? Or an axe-wielding maniac on the run from the cops. Could it? It could be... It could be... Mom? Yeah? Oh, no. Please, no. No. You never forget the first time you see a dead body. Again, you gotta be careful what you wish for. Hold on a second. Okay. Just wanted to make sure we did a full investigation. Jenny knew it was wrong to disturb the crime scene. Then you shouldn't do it. But I have to know who's under here. Slowly, she drew back the head. Please don't be my mom. Please don't be my mom. Dean Strausberry? Yep. Thank God. 
Thank God! Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. Poor Mr. Strausbury. What happened to you? Was this a terrible accident? Or worse? Murder! Murder! The stomach churned. <gasps> Seeing the Dean's lifeless face, his contorted frame. Oh God. Jenny felt the urge to run, to get as far away from this horrific sight as possible. Nope, we gotta investigate. I just... Jenny had longed for an adventure, for a real case to solve. I didn't expect it to be like this. She gathered herself, took a deep breath, and began to search for clues. <sighs> Let's do this. Obviously, the neck, hello? He looks like he's been dead for weeks. His skin is pale and colorless, and there's a strange mark on his neck. Six it's cents a book about by predicting the future. Clairvoyant. I suppose it didn't belong to Mr. Strasbury then. Ouch. Pocket watch. It's smashed. Most likely from the fall. <laughs> Damn it, game. The hand stopped at 3.57 p.m. There you go. That gives me a potential time of death. There you if go. Jenny had arrived just a few minutes earlier. I might have been able to save him. Can't think that way. We don't know anything for sure. Ooh, a planner. The Dean's planner lay open on today's date. Plugs with key. Move to Tuesday. Perhaps I can retrace his steps and create a timeline of events. Tell the truth. Meet JL. Could that be mom? Yeah. Where's Widow's Drop? Mm. I've never heard of it. Looks like he completed all his chores for the day. I already knew the Dean was meeting mom here. So where is she now? That's a pretty good question. Lunch with Looks Keith. like he canceled his meetings on Friday and rearranged lunch with Keith. Oh, poor Keith. Jenny didn't know how she would break the news to him. But I should be the one to tell him. Gossip spreads like wildfire in Arthurton. He sure speech. was working hard on that speech. Mm -hmm. I'm sad he won't get to deliver it. All right, there's another book. A book about chance. Tail or heads. Tail or heads. Taylor heads. Taylor heads. A complete history of the coin toss. What are the odds that this was an accident? And it's technically one out of two. The, the hawk, hawk and the, and the weasel, weasel and other bedtime stories. It could be important. And again, it could have just joined the Dean for the ride. What are the odds? About 50 50. Hmm. There are bits of glass and metal debris everywhere. He has burn marks on his hand. Ooh. It's our last Dean's clue. Hands clapped shut around a small object. That's Ooh. strange. Rigor mortis usually takes hours to set in. I'm sorry for what I'm about to do, Mr. Strasbury, but this could be a vital clue. Vital clue. Fucking Mom's vicious. Card? But that means That doesn't mean anything. Julie the clue had definitely been here. We knew that. She could be the last person to have seen him alive. We don't <clears throat> We don't know that because CJ was also here. She could be the killer. Impossible. My mother's a forensic expert. Which makes her pretty fit for the crime if she wants to set it She'd up. She'd never leave such incriminating evidence behind. But even the smartest criminals made mistakes. She said it herself. Jenny couldn't deny this looked bad for her mom. If anyone else sees this, they'll jump to conclusions. They'll think my mom's a murderer. Don't Unless. take it. A peculiar thought crossed Jenny's mind. Unless 
There's nothing to find. Removing evidence from a crime scene was highly unethical. We're not doing that. So is planting evidence to frame an innocent person? Yes. She had no proof of that? Nope. I have to do something. We're leaving the evidence. Mm -mm. Mom would kill me if she thought I tampered with evidence. Mm-hmm. Besides, she's innocent. The truth will come out. Agreed. Tamper I think that's evidence. all the evidence I'm going to find here. She took one last look at the Dean's lifeless body. Also, we ruined the crime scene. We moved the body. We touched it. We did the bad thing. I wonder if she makes a good detective. Exactly static. The truth might come out. Should we call the police or should we keep contaminating the crime scene? I don't know, KB Tibbs. I mean, I'm just a child. I'm sorry, Mr. Strasbury. Who got I paid a nickel for finding office. glasses. Jenny knew she should leave and call the police. But how often did a case like this come along? Never. There's more to this than meets the eye. Of course. The case of the dead Dean. Hi, Jumpy! It's good to see you! Some of this evidence must be connected. So she opened her journal to join the dots. You shouldn't be standing here when we're doing this. What I'm was the apparent cause of death? Saying. Um... Dean's, Dean's ring was stuck in the electrified ladder rails. That seems pretty plausible. Burn marks and broken balcony. Sound good? I think that sounds pretty good. Why Why would the hawk and the... Yeah. Cool. Bang! It looks like the Dean was thrown from the balcony when he reached down to pick up his ring, which was stuck in the electrified ladder track. Rude. He grabbed the curtain, but it didn't slow him down. Rude. He landed on a bed of metal and glass debris. Yikes. All of that is a yikes. Yeah, we're going to take a look at that. What is unusual about the Dean's death? I agree. Uh, the neck and face... I don't know if that's unusual. The torn curtain. It's either the torn curtain or the mom's ID card. What do you think? I don't think it's the pocket watch. Why would the children's book be special? Neck and face, definitely. Mom's ID card or torn curtain. What you think, chat? What you think? What you think? I'd go ID card. Mom's ID card is unusual as fuck. Try it. There you go, chat. Strange Dean mark. Has a strange mark on his neck. Mm -hmm. All the skin around his face is gray and gaunt. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like it before. He's holding my mom's ID card, which makes her the prime suspect. Mm -hmm. Why would she or anyone want to kill Dean Strasbury? GG chat. Jenny suspected foul play. Obviously. What was the motive? Had she missed something? The watch! The Dean's watch stopped at 3.57 p.m. Mm-hmm. When I came into the library, the clock tower rang four times. Four o'clock. The library only has one exit. And I haven't so seen anyone think. with the Dean since I got here. Which meant, if the Dean was murdered... The killer must still be here! <gasps> fuck! He's getting away! Where the fuck did you go? 